initiatives to shape the future of work and collaboration. Catherine holds a BA in computer science from UC Berkeley, where she built Codeology, a nonprofit that helps individuals kickstart their dream careers in tech. She's also involved in various other communities, including on deck. Local host by Contrary Capital, Peer VC's female founder circle, developer DAO, and City DAO. Without further ado, here is Catherine to talk to us about top PM skills desperately needed in Web3. Catherine, I pass it on to you. Take it away. Thank you. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, can everyone see my screen, my slides? Awesome. So thanks so much for the introduction. I'm so grateful to be here today, but also kind of, I think it's hilarious that I'm here today because a year ago, I wasn't into crypto at all, despite being constantly surrounded by a bunch of my crypto bro housemates who were constantly talking about DeFi and how they're constantly making 20% interest over their staked assets. And I remember saying to them, hey, good for you dudes, but wake me up when crypto is actually impacting people on a more social level, peace out. And then came November 2021, where the significance of Web3 really hit me like a train. It was when I bought my first membership to my first DAO. And if you aren't familiar with DAOs, they stand for Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, basically big words for an internet native community with a shared bank account where people are incentive aligned by crypto equity that they collectively own. And what piqued my interest about this specific DAO was that there was a really smart group of people on the internet who asked themselves, hey, what would happen if we raise some money by selling some tokens, bought a 40 acre piece of land in Wyoming with that money, and then let the token holders then vote on what to do with the land and make decisions like, how do we wanna resell the land? What do we wanna build on it? Can we implement new ways of profit sharing? And all these crazy experimental questions. And while that was cool and all, what really blew my mind though was the next thing. With the token I bought, I got access to these exclusive conversations within the community where I saw these brilliant lawyers, designers, architects, engineers from all over the world trying to come together and deliver towards a mission that they're personally aligned on, which is to construct a digital city using physical land. And in that moment, it hit me what the future of work would be and why everyone is so excited about crypto. And hear me out on my thought process. My observation was that individuals unite over a shared goal form a community, such as CityDAO, and then they work towards the mission to do that. They need to make contributions. And because of crypto, it allows communities to reward individuals for those contributions with a mix of liquid equity via tokens and also salary. And because of the internet, individuals can be a part of multiple communities enabled by crypto. And so what does this mean? Because of crypto and the financialization of everything, including work, it means that we're headed towards this future where people can freely contribute towards the missions that they are personally aligned with, that they love, and also get paid in equity, aka ownership. And I realized that because of Web3 and crypto, there's a whole new way of work and life that's being built. Imagine if you were involved in community A and B that you both care about and based on the skill sets that you had, such as if you're a designer, but also you're a writer, you can contribute freely to these communities and then get paid back in, in equity. And the epiphany of what I experienced in that moment was my on-ramp into Web3. And that's when I packed everything into my bag and drove to San Francisco without turning back. Just kidding. I wish I had that kind of an epic story. I, in this day and age, uh, instead of driving over to Silicon Valley to start your own company, you just change your profile picture on Twitter with, into your NFT, and then you use your ENS name everywhere instead of your real name. And so what's my role today? Well, as introduced, I'm one of the co-founders of Grant Kudos which is a way that lets you send kudos as an NFT, pretty straightforward. Um, what that means is that we let people inscribe their recognition onto the blockchain so that records of their recognition, their achievements and certifications can go onto, well, the blockchain, which is this, imagine this global bulletin board that's recognized by everyone 
in a way that's truly tied to the individual. And in the future, no matter which application you log on to or which community you want to be a part of, you can truly own, showcase, and carry forward these signals of your reputation with you. It's kind of like badges, but it's not like a paper certificate that's taped to your wall that you can lose. It's also not just an image that you get in an email that's not really meaningfully recognized in, by anyone else because it's just in your inbox. And um, all in all, what we're building is these building blocks to, um, to your digital identity, your proper digital identity that's not controlled by today's tech giants. Before starting my own company, I was a product manager at Atlassian for a few years before joining another startup called Lumos. And in my day-to-day -day role today, I still function as the product manager where my job is to try and build the best product possible for our users. And today I'm super excited to share with you what I think are the top three PM skills that are desperately needed in Web3 based on my observations and experiences. Um, and quick disclaimer, I do work in an area that services communities and DAOs and companies. And so my perspective might lean a little bit differently from people who work in decentralized finance, for example. But let's get to it. So the first skill that's really needed in Web3 is product discovery, which is the process of building and iterating towards something that people need. The reality is today, most Web3 products aren't great. You know why? Because this is how people build products. Uh, most products start with this extremely pristine 30 page white paper. The white paper checks out in theory and philosophy and sounds super cool. And then you take a long time to build it thinking it's gonna completely revolutionize the world. And then this is what it looks like when the product gets shipped. This happens because people aren't truly spending the time asking themselves, what problem am I trying to solve? Will it be something that gets used? And how would it get used? Well, how do we get around this? Uh, it actually just goes back to the basics, which is doing incremental product validation, the old stuff, such as talking to your users. Now, the beauty of Web3 is that the ethos is very open. For example, it's very common to create discords and have your community and your users hang out in your servers, ready to give feedback when you need it. And so here's an example of someone on the engineering team, uh, my co-founder, Ashley, just directly asking our community for some ideas around this product problem we were trying to solve. And you can see people were just ready, uh, right on there, ready to hop in and give some input. And also everyone's really open to chatting on crypto Twitter as well. There have been so many times where I had a question, I would just be able to DM people that uh, on crypto Twitter who I thought would be insightful. And people would be super, super open to just hopping on calls and giving me feedback on some of the questions that I had. And then during these calls, we'd have just questions like, hey, like what, um, how would you use this? Or what do you imagine to happen when I click on this button? Um, and we would just slowly build conviction over these initial insights. But really nothing beats shipping a workable product and then watching your users hit limitations, hit a wall and come up with creative workarounds to use what you've built. Uh, and so after creating a beta, we literally did watch teams try and use our product and we learned about all these workarounds that people are trying to implement on spreadsheets to try and use our product as intended. And it was painful, it was brutal, but pain aside, during this process, we got to actually validate product value, which is do people actually even have the desire to figure out how to use your product, even if it requires jumping over these hoops. And then from the workarounds, we gathered some insights and figured how do we use these wonderful, this wonderful goldmine to iterate on the, the next version of our product. And in the end, well, whether or not something has value, we kind of just let the market feedback speak for itself. And despite the number of painful workarounds people went through, end users were super excited to get acknowledged for their hard work and getting these proofs of recognition from our partner using what we built. And so what's the key lesson here? Unlike these types of products, where you have really smart teams come up with great theoretical ideas, but don't really know how to iterate fast based on real tangible feedback. Really good products are built on iterative loops using product discovery. And I'm 100% sure I'm definitely preaching to the choir here because I'm assuming many of you are product managers already. This is just lean product development 101, right? And if you think about it, it's already a skill and a mentality and a discipline that you can already bring into Web3. The second skill that's desperately needed in Web3 is prioritization, especially in the context of DAOs. So the problem with DAOs today is actually very obvious, and I'm gonna give you a hint, it's actually in the name. Um, DAOs stand for Decentralized 
autonomous organizations. And the nature of DAO today is that people get really, really excited about something. They come together into one place and then they find themselves um, doing their own thing. And oftentimes this means trying to do everything. And the impact of this is often just chaos. Most DAOs resemble this meme today with different people from different groups within the community trying to put out their own fire. But the DAOs that can figure out how to actually rally people towards a shared purpose in a disciplined, empowering way will actually just moon, and literally. And in fact, the best DAO I've seen do this is MoonDAO. Uh, yes, MoonDAO. As you can probably guess, it started it as a meme, but under the disguise of a meme, MoonDAO is actually this international group of people that's united by the mission of decentralizing access to space research and exploration. And they, they even have, they're literally trying to send someone to the moon. Like they have partnerships with Blue Origin to literally send someone to the moon. And if you check out what they're up to, you'll see a great example of distributed coordination across the world where people are working intensely towards this shared mission. They have English speakers and Chinese speakers working together from the clock all over the world uh, to make the goals come to life. And you wanna know what the secret is behind their incredible cross-cultural, cross-language and cross-continent teamwork? It's ruthless prioritization, OKRs. I'm serious. They literally have project templates in place that encourage anyone to submit new ideas and talk about how they'll stay accountable to these goals. And it's always a little bit funny to me when people say having leaders and setting goals means there's centralization and that's not web three. From what we can learn via MoonDAO, rallying people around a clear focus is crucial for any type of organization, no matter the decentralization level. And as a product manager, you've been trained to influence people without managerial authority. You already know how to empower individuals and take action towards a common mission. And whether it's OKRs or RICE or whatever framework you wanna use, it's about getting people focused on the most important things at hand and keeping people accountable about it. And if you're a PM, this is already in your blood. And the last key skill I want to highlight for today is facilitation, which is the act of aligning everyone towards an executionable goal and, and uh, keeping people accountable throughout the entire process. You might have seen the GM meme somewhere on the internet, probably crypto Twitter. And the origin of this is crypto never sleeps. And that's because crypto is this global movement and it's always morning time somewhere. And this means that coordination among humans can get really challenging within Web3. It can often feel like stakeholder management, but on steroids. During a recent partnership with one of the DAOs that I'm in, shout out to developer DAO here, we wanted to use Mankudos to distribute out hackathon prizes. And after the initial idea, we decided to get on a voice call and everyone was really excited and wanted to iron out some details. And among six people, there was only one common time slot here. And on top of that, every stakeholder had different commitments and different obligations outside of hackathon planning. And you know, at the moment, most people are in DAOs as like a part-time thing, and you can never really be sure when someone's going to be available. And so the reality is sometimes working together can be challenging because of these physical limitations. But to me, there are a few things more beautiful than watching people from all over the world coming together and making something happen out of their own will. And the key to enabling, enabling work to happen despite all these challenges is really just extreme stakeholder alignment. Our favorite thing as PMs, right? I'm not gonna go, to, uh, go on too much for this one, but uh, if there's one thing we did really well for the hackathon planning, is that we made the most out of our sinks with really, really clear goals, action items, owners, deadlines, and follow-ups. Again, PM 101, right? Stakeholder management. The, the most the most fun thing in the world. <laughs> anyway, um, to ensure a successful deployment though, we literally just checked in remotely every single day to make sure that all the moving parts were getting moved forward accordingly. And shout out to Sarah um, Higgies. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce your username on Discord. I think, I believe you're in the call. I think I saw you earlier, but yeah, shout out to you because this is exactly what you did. It was so easy working with you because you had done all these things so well. And in the end, of course, it was worth it. Again, the user feedback speaks for itself. And so to recap all the things that was mentioned, Web3 really needs people who can think critically about solving for user needs, 
ruthlessly prioritizing with the team and the community, and also finally executing towards a common goal. And did my talk just scream PM 101 to you? Because it literally was. If you are in any way unsure about what skills you can bring to Web3 as a PM, just know that the community already needs you. There is so much opportunity waiting for you to go explore and build incredible products that have the potential to transform the infrastructure of today's world. And yes, today you might know Web3 as people trading monkey images or the market is crashing, but just know that we're still at the tip of the iceberg today, exploring the impact of hyper-financializing everything, assets, ownerships, communities, whatever. And of course, yes, like the, the market today is not as hot as it was seven months ago because of crazy things happening in the background. Um, but just remember some of the best companies today, such as Alchemy and OpenSea, they were built during the last crypto winter. And these companies became multi-billion dollar businesses because of some of the practices that we talked about today. The product leaders there made sure to continuously talk to users to deliver on the 10X experience. They ruthlessly prioritized and execute it towards the goals that they set for their teams and their community. And if there is one single takeaway that I want you to have, it's that Web3 does need more product thinkers and there is no better time than now. Thank you so much for coming today. If you enjoyed my talk and have any questions or comments, feel free to follow and DM me on Twitter. And I'm gonna flip it over to Felix for some uh, closing announcements. I think uh, maybe if we have some questions uh, on the on the queue, let me just check. I'm just gonna refresh my page my page real quick. Make sure I'm checking it. Does anyone have any questions for Karen? Everybody, Catherine, sorry. Um, does anyone have questions for Catherine? Let me just refresh. Make sure we got this. Okay, we got some questions. Uh, With Heart asks, uh, as you mentioned, uh, DAOs can be quite chaotic and often aren't hierarchical. Um, do you have any advice for identifying choosing stakeholders? Yeah, I think um, if you if I think about my experience working at a big company, it can feel kind of similar, right? Like. At a big company, once you reach like thousands of people, it does become quite chaotic in that you might have stakeholders, maybe like even outside of the country that you're working out of, and you might not know which teams will be direct, drastically um, impacted. And so my advice here would be one, like when you try to identify, I mean, like do your best, right? Ask around your immediate network and let them tell you who you should loop in. But I think at the end of the day, execution in Web3 matters most. And so what I would recommend is to just take charge and be clear about what you're trying to do um, and say, this is what I'm going to do. These are uh, these are my plans. Like, let me know if there are any concerns. Uh, if no one shouts at me, then I'm going to do it. So that's one thing I would recommend. The other framework is something that I actually learned from a previous company, which is called the, the DACI framework. Um, D-A-C-I stands for decisions, uh, decider, and then A stands for um, aware, and then C stands for communicated, and, and uh, oh, sorry, C stands for contributors, and I stands for informed. Basically, create a table where you can clearly state who the decision maker is, who is the one uh, taking action, who contributed to this decision, and like who else should inform. I think that at the end of the day, there should only be one key decision maker, and it's hard, but it, it's kind of like you have to prioritize the, the people who should have like the final say, especially when it comes to like uh, micro decisions that don't necessarily need to involve the entire community. So just being clear about um, who is going to have like the final say in this and then keep everyone informed along the journey is my biggest advice. Thank you so much. Uh, now let's take the question from Shardul. Blockchain doesn't allow software rewrite. How do you create products that can evolve? What does the product feedback look look like in Web3? Yeah, um, one of the biggest challenges about building product within Web3 is to your point, blockchain is immutable. And so um, actually one of, so with my co-founder, we talked a lot about this, like how given how hard it is to iterate 
how can we make sure we can anticipate for that? And so my biggest advice here is, even if you don't know everything, just try your best to anticipate like all the different possible scenarios and try to account for it. So when you're designing your products try, um, in certain areas where you know there might be uncertainty, try to be uh, write the, the software there to be as general as possible. And, you know, chances are you're probably going to be wrong because that's just how uh, product development works. And so when it comes to those situations, you do have to just go through painful data migrations. But in the end of the day, I think knowing that you are iterating towards like a higher and higher confidence solution um, that makes it worth it in the end. Great, thank you so much. Now we're gonna take one last question because we have an announcement. So unfortunately, we're just gonna take one more. Uh, Harsha asks, uh, what transferable skills can data scientists bring in Web3 community? Data scientists. Um, let me think, I'm not super familiar with data scientists in general. I, from the ones that I have briefly worked with, uh, they do a lot of product analytics, they do a lot of market research. Um, I think being able to, I think that if you can get to a product that gets enough adoption, like being able to instrument the right analytics to see what type of user behavior you can capture, and then being able to track like funnels and, and segmentate all of the, uh, these events would help, help product managers and other people on the team be able to make more informed decisions uh, using real user behavior. And so that is definitely um, still a really good product development process that I think should be implemented within Web3. Beautiful, thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, the last that we are gonna have for today. Now I pass it over to Felix. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much, Helen. And thank you so much, Catherine. And hey, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. Um, I'm super excited. I hope all of you are as excited as I am. Some of you might have seen my Twitter tweet. That's why you're here um, for this. And um, also like Catherine's talk. I hope it has been an amazing week for all of you at Product Week. So um, I hope that you are fired up and ready to go right now because we're going to have probably one of the most exciting launch, one of the most exciting announcements today. Um, it's going to be phenomenal. So let's get started. All right, Helen, let me know if you can see my screen. We're gonna, yes. gonna get going. Go okay, so hey everyone. So thank you all for joining the product week, the closing keynote by Catherine, that was amazing. Um, you know, we all, love, uh, we all love what she's doing. And um, you know, that's why she's here today to share about the future of technology and uh, web free. So throughout this week, we have seen a lot of amazing speakers from the top companies and the best companies from around the world. Um, that are in tech and, you know, they represent over 50 companies um, uh, that are in the Fortune 500. So we're incredibly thankful for our partners um, for, you know, this incredible week for the community. And, you know, in just five days, in just five days of product week, we have seen over 20,000 seats that has been reserved, that has been RSVP, that has been claimed by the community, by all of you here, by your friends. Um, and we're just so excited that, you know, you guys are all super into this, you know, product week and all into learning new skills and knowledge. And one of the things that I kind of want you to, you know, take away as well from this keynote is make sure that you take some screenshots, right? Make sure that you take some screenshots, make sure that, make sure that you share it online, because this is, you know, you know, like I said, this is going to be pretty historic. It's going to be one of the things that, you know, you'll remember for a very, very long time. And, you know, in the five, past five days, we have seen over 10 masterclasses, six panel discussions from over 30 countries. And, you know, it makes us the number one product week of the year, 100% by this community. And it is made by all of you. If you search on Twitter, if you search on LinkedIn, you'd see all the amazing learnings that are put out there online. But today, I want to share one more thing. And this is something that I think you know, Steve Jobs used to use a lot at Apple, and I think, you know, we use that quite sparingly, um, except on very, very special occasions, as you know it. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, we do the same as well. We want to honor that. Now, one of the things that, you know, we were thinking a lot about um, while we were planning for the product week was really about how do you get to product week, right? How do you 
how do you make sure that you're represented as an attendee, as a member of the community at a product week? And we thought, you know, if we give like passes and tickets online, it's kind of a little bit mainstream. If we put it on a Figma file, you know, that's like a little bit mainstream as well. And, you know, obviously we would love to do that, but we want something that you can own, right? We want something that you can actually have it yourself, right? Whether it be a lanyard physically, but that's obviously a little bit out of budget for this time around, but, you know, we'll, we'll ramp that up. Um, but we're, you know, that's what, what, that was what we were thinking. And we're also thinking that what if you could have a certificate for attending the workshops, the masterclasses, the, the panel discussions that you're on? Because, you know, in a way, you're spending your time learning and upskilling yourself. And this should all be recognized by the world. You know, and the list goes on, right? Tickets, passes, certifications, badges, awards, prizes, and many, many more. And, you know, we want to change that. We don't want, we don't want to just give like a certificate uh, out of nowhere. Uh, we want to, you know, we want to give the pass just, you know, just by, just for the sake of giving a pass. We want that to be recognized. We want you to be recognized. Um, and, and this recognition belongs to you, right? And it belongs to wherever you go, right? You can bring it onto your workplace. You can bring it onto different communities, but you've earned it here. You know, you've earned it here through your merit. And we truly want to design an experience and we want to design something that, you know, belongs to you and that it that can be recognized by industry and around the world, frankly. And, uh, you know, we have been thinking about this for a very long time. Uh, and if some of you know where we're going, uh, that's great for you. But we've been thinking about this for some time and, you know, it's been a lot of noise around this. And we, we want to make sure that, you know, we put it in the best way that represents this community and represents all of you as individuals. Um, and we have spent some time with, with, with Catherine and her team um, to work on something quite you know, exciting uh, for what we consider as the future of you know, learning and the future of work and proof that you're extremely talented, that you know, uh, you're upskilling yourself through a community. And I wanna share that with all of you today, right? Something that you know, is extremely inspiring to me. So today, we're finally, finally very proud to announce the first ever ADP list community NFT. The first ever one in the community. It's extremely exciting. It's an extremely bold step towards the future. And we truly believe that when you own an NFT, you own not just a part of this community, but you own a piece of your identity when you learn. Every single time when you learn, when you mentor someone, you own a piece of that in your individual identity as a part of ADP list. And we want you to have that. And we're starting off with the Product Week's NFT. And this will be the NFT for Product Week for all of you that are here today. And we're super excited to mint this into an NFT for the entire community. In fact, the people who has RSVP'd for this. And we're starting this project and this first step with none other than Catherine and her team at Kudos and at Contribution Lab. So shout out to Catherine and her team for working on this uh, tirelessly. And uh, we're so excited to launch this today. You know, take a screenshot, whatever you want, share it online because it's gonna be a celebration. It's gonna be the first step towards a lot of things that we're doing at ADP List. NFTs on ADP List can help you be recognized anywhere in any companies that we're working with Notably, our partners at Slack, you know, our partners at Invision, you know, our partners at Figma, so on and so forth. You know, this will also allow you to get exclusive invites whenever we have amazing parties that are going on in town, in the city, virtually, so on and so forth. And finally, with this NFT and many more NFTs to come, you get to be a part of the community that you can belong. And you get to be a part of the community that you can be yourself and be absolutely cool and still be learning. And these are just some of the NFTs that we have in my prototypes, but there are more, many more to come. And the great news is that all of you here today will receive an exclusive AD Please product with 2022 NFT for free. And our team will send out the type form on the chat and you fill up your wallet address, you fill up your email, your wallet address, and you will be receiving this NFT in your wallet in no time from Catherine and her team. And there's so much more to come in the following years, the months, 
that we're all building for this community. Because we want to build a platform that is created for the community by the community. Since the very beginning, we've always been about the people and we all want all of you to have a piece of this community. And we finally took the first step to that through decentralization, through Web3 and together with Kevin and the team. So we cannot be more excited to do this together on this very day that is quite frankly a historic step for the community, for the company and for everyone that has worked on this tirelessly. So thank you all so much for being a part of the product week 2022 for being a part of today's closing keynote. I hope you spread the word about what just happened because there will be more to come. So thank you all so much. Uh, thank you, the team, the speakers, everyone. I hope you have a rest, best rest of the week. Have the best weekend ahead, best Friday, and you'll receive your NFTs very soon. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. For those of you who want to learn more from the best tech talents in the world, discuss ideas, network, and get mentorship, head over to our website, adplus.org, or follow us on our social media. Together, let's be more. And I will see you around in the community. Thank you so much for joining us today. And this is it. This is the last session of the PM Week. See you around. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us.